What's good, fam? This is your boy Dijon, and this is how to be a motherfucking legend. Yeah! This is the place to be for inspiration and the realization of your full creative potential. Uh huh. Each episode, we're going to be sharing tips uh. and insights to help you unlock the greatness that is already inside of you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we are back with this week's episode of How to Be a Motherfucking Legend with Rachel Pringle. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, this is only the, the second time we've been in the same we've we've mm-hmm. like been in the same space and the first time was by accident running into each other outside of air one yeah um rachel and i just have mutual friends and i just saw through her instagram and her online presence that i appreciated her vibration so she seemed like a good person to have come bless us with some wisdom yes um she's going to be talking today about self-love because mm-hmm. she is a, a coach or how would you like to define what it is that you do yeah, definitely coaching, one-on-one coaching, uh, embodiment coaching specifically, which is taking the aspects of self-love and integrating into our physical body. And then I do a wild woman experience, uh, which is just for women now, but we're opening up to wild humans, which would be men and women. And it involves meditation, voice release, uh, activation, and guided dance through archetypes and through a series of emotional things to to release trauma and mm. you know bring us back to the purity of who we are that sounds awesome yeah it <laughs> is awesome <laughs> yeah i mean i've spent the last couple of years like intensely focused on self-healing and self-love and I'm not sure if it's like a mainstream concept yet, so maybe you could explain like how you got introduced to it and what it means to you and maybe what some of your self-love practices are. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting because I always considered myself like a very confident and loving person, always, I would say my whole life. And I discovered and created this sort of meditation about five years ago called the self-love meditation. And it was specifically around healing the issues that I was having with my stomach. I was having um, digestion issues and IBS for years and upon years. And so um, I took a number of different techniques and correlated and kind of combined them and made it together. And so I would go into meditation and I would physically and um, and mentally clear uh, my my different parts of my body by speaking love to it. And when I started doing that, it was just a gateway into realizing how much room I had to go. Um, and this obviously came through the modeling industry and you know, it was like the, the deep inner workings of how we speak to ourselves on a daily basis. Even when we're, especially when we're going through adversity or struggle, we can, we can still feel deep emotions and feel sadness and feel pain and feel anger, but not be fully identified with it and making it be uh, that that's who we are. And so the journey has been, I would say, a lifelong journey, but really became a passionate, okay, I have to spread this to as many people as I can, you know, for the last five years, I would say. And for me the most important thing is our inner dialogue is our inner state how we are speaking to ourselves on a day-to-day basis Mm -hmm. and this this idea of conditioning that we all kind of hear about you know programming conditioning and it's it runs so much deeper than your parents are telling you to be an engineer but what you really want is to be a singer it's um it's affects us on the deep level of like our self-worth and so what what's really needed from us is to to go in and start to cultivate a relationship with our intuition which is our inner voice and to be able to then understand the difference between our ego and our intuition like our ego is 
he's always going to kind of talk to us of like, well, you should do this, and like you could have done that, and like it would have been so much better if you, you know, it's always kind of. Um, there's comparison. A, yes, yeah. a comparison, and a like, you were almost there, but if you did that, it would have been better. Which is how we, so many of us operate, on, on our own. You know what I mean? We. Um, we can get really lost in what it is that we're supposed to be doing, and our intuition is you know, our number one cheerleader and our advocate and our, you know, even if we've spent months away, when we come back to that conversation, she's not gonna be like, where'd you go? What have you been doing? You, that, she's like, hey, wow, you look amazing today. How do you feel? I've missed you, you look beautiful. Like, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a welcoming aspect and I think something that's so beautiful to talk about, which we spoke about just before this, is this idea of perfectionism is present in in so many of us in the mainstream. And then when you get into this spiritual community, there's spiritual perfectionism, which is um, such a motherfucker <laughs> because it's um, it you know can roll over into spiritual bypassing and um, spiritual ego and it's uh, it's a way to keep ourselves in physical constant contraction and I think that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that when um, when we're in listening to our ego or when we are um, spiritual bypassing or when we are trying to be perfect a part of our body is always in contraction mm. part of our body is holding physically um, because the energy is stuck mm. so that's why for me self-love practices such as breath work meditation which I do every single day um, and movement and shaking like a dog and you know getting really weird I think is super important because that's also part of the comparison thing right it's like the spiritual perfectionism is okay I'm gonna look like this I dress like this I I post on my Instagram every single day and I'm sharing in this way and this is what this looks like and I'm gonna go to this party and then I'm gonna go to this gathering and I meditate every single day mm -hmm. and I drink my tea in this way and I don't drink and I don't it's it gets wrapped up and you can even tell in that voice there's a, a tension there and so like getting weird I think is so important, like getting fucking weird. <laughs> What's something weird that you like to do? Um, I mean, for me, it's movement wise. Like I, one of the things I always say in, in Wild Woman is like, it birthed through my acting um, co like experiences. I did acting for a really, really long time. I'm still an actor, but I mean, class wise, uh, I would go into these characters that were like really ugly and old and weird and it was the most freeing uh cathartic thing i'd ever experienced especially like um being the type of woman that i am where i was a model and so there's this there's a projection of like oh well you're supposed to look this way all the time but like i like to get weird and i like to move my body in weird ways and make weird faces and like and if I'm not okay with that, then people are not going to be okay with that. But if I'm okay with that, then people automatically are okay with that. And then it turns into something that's freeing versus something that's like um, a crutch and, and is like can weigh us down and creates that contraction. Mm. Because again, like the, the idea of spiritual perfectionism, if, if I am one way and say I, I, go out to a party and I have a cocktail and maybe I get tipsy you know that, that that's okay and if someone sees me who knows who th might think I'm sober or, or whatever and they're like oh you, you 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 drink I'm like yeah I have a cocktail once in a while is and then they're like their whole thing is shattered you know and if I'm not okay with that then, then my whole world will shatter, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's like seeing the self-love is a projection all around us all the time. And 
that's why the inner dialogue and the inner relationship with the self is like the most important thing. You have to always, always come back to that. Be your own best friend. Be your own partner. You know, me and my partner joke all the time. Like, I'm like, I love you, but I love me more. Mm -hmm. Like, I love me the most in the whole world, but then I love you second. (laughs) (laughs) So. Yeah, that's such an important balance. You know, I feel like we have all these tools in our modern day society to create the life of our dreams. Like we can build a website and have an Instagram page and create a business in the image that we like. But like you were saying, that can also become a cage yeah. if you're so attached to a specific image coming through instead of being authentic. And exactly, it's like in the previous generations, it was like you decided what you wanted to do when you were 21 and then you did that for 50 years, which seems so fucking ridiculous. Crazy. But the other thing is like now if you're like, oh, I'm a fitness person mm-hmm. and you're like projecting that image, but then you you know, you don't feel like it anymore. You want to go in a different direction. You're just like, well, my personal brand is this or my yeah. personal brand is that. And um, I identify as an artist and a multi-passionate entrepreneur. So it's like my highest value for expression is authenticity. You know, it's not about um, being perfect. You know, I can fall into that trap sometimes. We all can. And then I just have to recognize it and let it go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's about, exactly, I feel the same way. I'm a, I'm a multi-passionate human being. I have so much expression in me. And it's so amazing that we're at this day and age that we can be that. And it's not only can we be that, but it's celebrated. Mm-hmm. And what I think comes with that is our is our is the freedom to be flexible and fluid fluid like in our expression in our self-love you know that's those are the things right it's like I love my Instagram page I love connecting with people it's like I think Instagram is brilliant the fact that Instagram is present now is what has made consciousness and spirituality so cool because we always had these feelings but we just didn't express them because we kind of felt like we were alone and now Instagram has has connected us in this amazing way but then the trap of like well I need to post every single day which I used to do all the time and that sometimes I, sometimes I don't in a couple of days because I'm doing one of my other passions because you're living because I'm living yeah. exactly and like it's and I speak sp- specifically for me to give myself that freedom to let the day to let the moment dictate how it wants to be expressed using myself as the vessel same with the like that's what true self-love is is to be flexible enough and fluid enough to be able to listen to what your intuition is saying right now like okay what I actually need is is not to sit down and meditate what I need is to like go for a walk and scream into nature Mm. you know and and I, I've had this con- continue you know because I mean Ram Dass used to say that all the time you think you're spiritual when you're just sitting in a room meditating but when you go and like sit with your parents or your family it's like how can how can we um, bring all of that everywhere we go you know and and let the self love practice be be able to spill over into every circumstance we enter you know and it's a it's a day-to-day practice it's like I just said that to my girlfriend today is that we're all expecting to get somewhere someday and then like it's done like that it's never (laughs) done I know I've been in that mindset before (laughs) you know I, I was saying this the other day to someone and that I I feel enlightened now Mm -hmm. because I don't consider enlightenment like a destination it's more of a direction and like recognizing that the path is to our center inwards you know so I a thousand percent agree I've had that similar conversation I was like we're trying to stop everything to just be in the stillness and instead of realizing that we're we've come here for a specific reason which is to experience um, everything to experience pain and struggle and and adversity and beauty and bliss and pleasure and eroticism and connection and all these things and that's why you know self-love is like the practice I continue to come back to because it, it works in every 
way because some days you're going to feel really shitty and and then still when that relationship has been cultivated while you're you know in the fire that voice is still there like just keep going just like keep going there's a golden nugget on the other side of this and there always is yeah keep going and and also let go yeah you know like you don't have to hold on to things yeah to keep them with you it's like you had that experience and it was an experience and now you're having another experience mm-hmm. you know it's interesting actually now that i'm thinking about it when i was younger like i said i was always a very confident and very loving person towards myself and others but i was in a very safe space i would only watch like really nice movies and like romantic comedies and it wasn't until that i really started to cultivate a self-love practice in whatever form that may be but just listening to my thoughts and and fine-tuning that vibration has it then allowed me to go into much deeper sides of myself and to be um, doing shadow work and to uh, discover like the depths of my being and know that I have my own back when I'm there Mm. whereas before I, I I couldn't even really go there which is I just thought of right now Mm. well I feel your embodiment I appreciate it. You feel feel very real. Thank you. And grounded. Well, after our lovely healing session, I feel grounded. <laughs> we had a mini healing session mm-hmm. before because I have a biomat and some Amazing sound therapy stuff. Forks. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good just to tune in and I feel like usually before I'm sharing in this way I receive the benefit of it too. So if I'm like yeah. holding space for someone else to get grounded, it helps me get grounded too. Cause really you're just creating space for that energy to flow through. So that's the secret, the yeah. secret sauce that we haven't exposed before. It's, I mean, that's self love yeah, right there. Right? And yeah. we need to also be able to receive that mm. when you gave that offering and say, yes, actually that would be amazing. Yeah. I would totally, and now I feel so much better. Fuck yeah. Yeah, exactly. Fuck yes. Well, right on. So is there anything coming up or anywhere you could share where people could connect with you further if they want to work with you or yeah, experience you one of your events? Find me on Instagram at Positive Pringle, like the potato chip. And I am rachelpringle.com. And October 7th is Wild Woman at As I Am studio in Brentwood. October 19th, my husband Johan and I are doing a talk on Shiva Shakti at As I Am Studio as well. And you can find all of this on my website. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And include that in the, in the comments. Yeah. This was Rachel Pringle's version of how to be a motherfucking legend. Woo! Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> thank you. All right, see you next time. I so appreciate you being here. If you enjoy the energy that we are creating and building, share it with the homies. Take a screenshot, post it on your Instagram stories. Leave a five-star review on iTunes. Really, those five-star reviews are really going to help this get to more people. Just let people know about it. And if you ever want help going deeper into yourself, developing yourself and doing that with a community and with guidance, head on over to programs.howtobeamotherfuckinglegend.com and we got you. Until next time, peace. If you have ever thought about doing a podcast, now is the time. Podcasts are more popular than ever and they're growing in popularity exponentially each year. They're wonderful expressions for creativity because there's no censorship. It's only what you find interesting. And then you can utilize that podcast to create a community around your interest and then grow your brand. If you ever thought about creating a podcast, I'm here to help you out. I'm hosting a free webinar where I'm laying out all the reasons why you should start a podcast and some helpful tips to get the ball rolling. Check the link in the comments for the webinar. Much love, fam. See you soon.